In this video, we are going to evaluate this integral taken from the qualifying round of the MIT Integration B 2020. To evaluate the integral of x to the 5 times e to the minus x to the 4 dx over x equals 0 to infinity. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. The first idea that came to my mind is to use the integration by parts. So the formula goes like this. The integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du, where uv are functions of x or um, the variable that you're integrating, whatever you name it. The idea of integration by parts is that I can split um, the integrand, the, re the yellow region, into products of two functions and then I can take out some of them which is already integrated outside the integral sign and the things remaining inside the integral will become much easier. So the key to use integration by parts effectively is to pick u and v wisely and the rule LIATE helps you in doing so. For this rule L stands for logarithm. Functions like natural log of x, etc. I means inverse. For example, arc sine, arc cosine, etc. A for arithmetic. In other words, polynomials. Say x cubed, x squared plus x. Things like that. T means trigonometric functions, sine, cos, tangent, and so on. And finally, E for exponential, functions like e to the x, etc. So the rule is, you should pick um, logarithm functions as u and the high priority over the other four kinds of functions following this direction. So if the function is higher in this list then that should take a higher priority in being chosen as u. Let's take this x to the 5 times x of minus x to the 4 as an example because x to the 5 is an arithmetic function, it's a poly, right? So you should pick this as u at a higher priority over the exponential function x of minus x to the 4. Now before I really do the integration by parts, let me do one simple substitution to make this um, expression uh, better looking. So first I'm going to let u equals x squared, then du equals 2x dx and when x equals 0 u equals 0 and when x tends to infinity u tends to infinity as well so this integral becomes integrating over um, from 0 to infinity of x times x to the 4 times e to the minus x to the 4 and then it becomes half of the integral from 0 to infinity of u squared times e to the minus u squared du. Then I'm going to use integration by parts on this integral x squared times e to the minus x squared dx. Or maybe I can replace this u By something else, say uh, m I can keep using um, I can keep using u in the in the question by part step. So here I'm going to let u equals x and then du equals dx and then dv according to, the, according to the formula 
u d v. So I'm going to let d v equals x times e to the minus x squared d x, and this is integrable. Integrating, I'll get v to be equal to minus a half of e to the minus x squared. Now I can follow the formula and say that it's equal to minus x over two times e to the minus x squared minus v du, which is minus a half times e to the minus x squared dx. Now we put back the limits, infinity zero, on both two expressions. This part. Should give you zero because when you put the upper limit into e to the minus x squared, you will get zero. If you put the zero into the, the lower limit zero into x over two, you get zero again. So that means what remains is just a half of zero to infinity of e to the minus x squared dx. And in fact, I can further rewrite that as. One over eight times the integral. This time not from zero to infinity, but from minus infinity to positive infinity of e to the minus x squared dx, because e to the minus x squared is an even function. So now what remains is to evaluate this integral. So now we come to a second part of our integration. Is that we now switch the integral, our target, to integrate the function e to the minus x squared over plus or minus infinity. This requires some kind of polar substitution on a double integral. So,、um, in theory, if I have this double integral of a two-variable function x and y, integrating over plus or minus infinity on both x and y, in other words, this is actually integrating. Over the entire r squared, r is the set of real numbers. Then we may let x equals r cos theta, y equals r sine theta. This is actually some kind of parametrization, which is that we have Cartesian, we have a Cartesian plane, which represents things、um, uh, by the horizontal and vertical distances from the origin. So something is like oh, a b something like that, or in on the other hand. We can express、um, coordinates in terms of its distance from the origin, as well as the angle that this line makes with the horizontal with the horizontal axis. So,、uh, because、um, this Cartesian representation x y has a one to one correspondence with this kind of polar、uh, coordinates r and the angle theta. I may simply let x equals r cos theta and y equals r sine theta, and I can express, I can rewrite the integral that integrates over the same space, which is the entire、um, r squared. Now the thing is, if I write it this way, then this integral, the double integral, will be equal to integrating over、um, D r and D theta, where r is the radius or the distance, and theta is the angle. So, because I'm representing the entire space, theta should take、um, all possible values, say zero to two pi, and for r, it should take from zero to infinity. So, represents the distance of the points between the points and the origin can be from zero to infinity, and the function will now become. F of r cos theta r sine theta, and we have to multiply by something called the Jacobian. The Jacobian, which is the determinant of the matrix, with entries being the partial derivatives. Of x and y with respect to. R and theta, respectively. And that is, if 
by definition, cos theta minus r sine theta, and then this is sine theta, and this is r cos theta. And by computing, we have the determinant to be equal to r. So we have to multiply an extra r in the new double integral. Now we're going to use this to calculate our integral of e to the minus x squared. So I'm going to let i to be the integral that I'm going to calculate. Then I'm going to consider i squared instead of i, which is multiplying two integrals. Multiplying this by another same integral, but the variable becomes y instead of x. So it's kind of a dummy variable. And we combine two integrals, and we'll have a double integral on both x and y. A multiplied integrand will have minus x squared plus y squared of dx dy. Now, by the polar substitution that I've mentioned just now, I can rewrite this as theta from 0 to 2 pi, and then r from 0 to infinity of the function, e to the minus r square cos square theta plus r square sine square theta, multiplying by extra r, the Jacobian. So the integrand would now become just e to the minus r squared times r. Now the function becomes integrable. So it becomes uh, 2 pi, which comes from d theta. I can move this over here and get the theta settled, and it will become just 2 pi. Multiply by minus a half of e to the minus r squared, upper limits and the lower limits, and what's left will be exactly 2 pi times 0 minus negative a half, and that is pi. So that means by considering a double integral instead, multiplying something else, I know that i squared equals to pi, and because we know i is always positive, so therefore i equals the square root of pi. And so that means, in conclusion, we know that our answer is actually equal to the square root of pi over 8. And we've solved the integral.